Hello, hello. I'm back. I'm back to do some crafting. Um, so I've got three things I need to say first of all. The first thing is an absolutely massive thank you um, regarding my last video. I'm not going to go into it, but the support has been absolutely overwhelming. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, second of all, the lovely Bernie has finally got in touch. So she will be getting her swap journey, That uh, her swap journal. No, it's not a swap journal. The five item swap journal that I created using the items from Corey. That will be off on Monday to Bernie. So thank you um, for everybody who helped me um, get that sorted out. Um, I just want to do a quick project share because this is part of a bigger project that I'm working on at the moment. It's just, I've used my um, fancy forest kit. Um, I'm just going to do a really quick flip through of this. I've got a little flip here. There's a little tag in there with the squirrel on. Um, this is the reason I wanted to show you this. Um, I had a lot of people asking me if I was going to make pages for the kit. And I made a few pages in order to make the tags etc in the kit but I didn't do pages to sell in the um separately um what I have done is one of the pages which is this page here and it's also on the back and I think it's, it's inside no I don't think there is any of it inside um but the paper there's one sheet it coordinates with the the digital kit and I'm going to pop that into my Facebook group so if you do want to use a page, there's a page in the Facebook group. And of course, you can use that to add pockets and make it look different. So um, I've got a little tag in here with the hedgehog on. And that's backed with tea stain paper so it can be written on. Um, in here, I've got a pocket with another little tag. I'm just going to do this really quickly because um, it's not really related. Well, it kind of is related to what I'm doing today. A couple of little tags there in the corner pocket. This one comes off. Um, it's a large tag with some writing space and there is another tag with writing space there too. Um, so that's just a little project I wanted to share with you quickly and explain that page will be going into the Facebook group if you wanted a page to go with the, um, the kit. Okay, so that's the three things. Thank you, little freebie and... Bernie is getting her journal so that's great news so what we're going to do today is I'm going to actually um, I get a lot of people asking about decorating papers and how I make the little scrappy books um, and they all usually start with a piece of packaging paper like this so I'm going to show you what I do before I get the items out that I'm going to use it's kind of a mixed media paper I'm just going to scrunch this up it's quite long I work on a fairly big piece at a time just give it a little scrunch and then flatten that out <laughs> um, and the reason I do this is because I like the pattern you get with the roller you don't have to use a roller there are substitutes you can use for every single thing that I'm going to show you so when I'm doing something like this I pick a colour scheme I'm going to show you at the end um, one of the blue ones that I've made. This is going to be more of a green. So I'm going to have um, Magic Moss. These are the Fresco um, Paper Artsy paints. They're a kind of chalk paint. Um, any acrylic will do. I'm using Steel Grey, a hint of mint, and I'm also using gold. So what I do is pick um, the gold I use at the base just to give it a little bit of a a background really um, and then I pick my colour so in this case it's green you could always substitute a lighter colour for a cream or a white if you want to and I'm using steel grey just as a kind of a filler really so I've got my four paints those are the four paints I'm going to be using I'm going to be using a roller I've got my jelly plate off to the side but you can of course use anything to roll your paint onto it doesn't have to be a jelly plate I've got a block I've got some um, gathered twig distress spray. I've got two oxides here, which I may or may not use. I've got some water. I've got a stencil for later. And I've also got my black ink. You could always substitute this for a black paint. You don't have to use an ink. Okay, so let's get started. Um, if you don't have a roller, you could always use um, a card and scrape your paint on. 
the point. So here we go. We've scrunched up our paper. I'm going to start with my gold. I don't want this too gold. I don't want the gold really kind of... Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to shake my paint first. Give that a shake. Um, any acrylics would do. You don't have to use the same paints I'm using. So I've got a little bit... I'm just going to move my camera very slightly. Just so you can see my my paint okay so roll it out and I'm gonna do I'm one of these people that only like to go in two directions I go up and down and side to side I don't use the different angles I don't like the look of it on my work um, other people carry it off much better um, but I, I never seem to like it when I try it so I just go in two directions up and down and side to side and I'm really not thinking about where I am applying this paint right now I'm going to slide this over so you won't be able to see my roller for a moment I like working on a larger piece just going to add a little bit more paint And I'm just, like I said, randomly making sure there's a little bit of gold here and there in the background. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel up my jelly plate, find a little bit where there's not a lot, and just use that up. Okay, so that is our gold layer done and I'm just going to roll it out a little bit more to thin it out it will make sure that it dries nice and fast you just get a little glimmer of it here and there so that's my first layer all done okay now I'm going to move on to my grey my neutral you could use a cream um, any kind of neutral colour this could always be replaced with silver. If I was using a silver metallic, I would probably swap out the grey for a cream. So I'm just going to add a little bit of my grey and I'm using steel grey. And I'm going to do exactly the same again with this grey. And because I've crinkled my paper, if you use a light light touch when you're rolling it out you're going to get the texture of the paper come through which is what I love This would be the difference if you're rolling a lot more paint onto your roller, having it more even. I like both looks, so I'll go for a bit of both. <clears throat> and again, I'm just going to grab my... Right, so I'm quite happy with this. Now it is probably quite a quite a bit of grey in there compared to the gold. So now I'm going to move on to my main colour, which I have chosen green. Um, I don't have a very dark green um, that I could find, especially in this paper artsy paint. But um, what I love about this paint is it, I do love the chalk effect, but I also love the fact that it dries so fast. So I'm not really, if you're using an acrylic paint, you might want to dry between each layer. Um, but this um, paper artsy paint is super quick when it comes to drying speed. And thinner layers are much better than, you might think I'm loading my jelly plate quite often because a thinner layer to me is better than a thicker a thicker layer and you could 
probably get one of these kind of papers done in one side, probably 10 to 15 minutes. It's a quick, a quick way of creating background papers and papers for your um, grungy projects. I mean, you could equally do this in your pinks. If you're a pink person, you don't have to necessarily use these kind of colours that I am using. Now, this still hasn't quite got the colour tone and the look that I'm going for. So I am going to have a hunt for a darker green. OK, I found two greens. They're Art Deco. Um, neither of them are um, the Paper Artsy paints. So the other um, papers that I do, I very rarely have to go and find a third colour. Um, I'm going to I think I'm going to go for the, the dark green. OK, so like I said, <laughs> um, you just have to kind of play it by ear. If you're not happy, if it's not what you're looking for, then just add another layer. Right, what I am going to do is I'm actually going to give this a little bit of a dry now just to make sure it is ready for my next layer. Okay, so the next layer, I'm going to start with my Distress Stain um, Gather Twig. So there are a few ways to do this. Um, I got this idea from Louise Heinzel. I just think it's absolutely amazing. I love how this looks. So I'm going to take my spray spray it onto my block i'm going to spray it with water as i run it over my work okay now what i'm going to do is i'm taking my pad and just spreading that about i'm not necessarily interested in having this as droplets Okay, now I'm going to do the same again and I'm going to use my Distress Oxide. I don't have this as a spray. I only have this as an ink pad. So I'm going to add that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to splatter some of this. To get the droplets. Gonna have to give this a dry. So what I love about the Distress um, inks is you just get this grungy lit look. You're not getting really clear. I mean, we do have a little bit up here, which is a bit clearer, but that's not quite dry yet. So that's why it's the way it is. So the next layer I'm going to use involves my stencil and my lighter paint. So I'm just going to give this a shake. Oh, I haven't got my sponge out. That will do. I do wash my sponges sometimes, but this is a nice new one. So I'm going to add a little bit of ink, um, add a little bit of paint. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start at the top. And I'm just going to add some paint now you will get some bleeding with your ink if you've got ink underneath here because obviously the paint is wet i'm just going to lift it up i'm not doing anything fancy like getting a 
taping it down or holding it in place. I'm literally just holding it because this is a grungy paper. I don't mind if it moves a bit. There we go, I think that's sufficient for now. I'm just gonna lay a baby wipe over my stencils. As you can probably tell, my stencils are not immaculate, <laughs> okay? So before I go ahead and do anything else, I need to dry this particular layer. So the last thing I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to use my ink and my ink is in a fine tip bottle. Like I said, you could use paint to do this. The reason I'm using ink is um, on some of my papers, I'll do both sides. Um, but as you can see, the, the distress ink will come through and so will this ink. So I like that. I don't necessarily have to decorate both sides of the paper at the same time. Um, it is messy. And I'm just going to splatter. I don't know how much ink. Maybe there's not a lot of ink left in my bottle. But I'm just going to put some black ink splats around my page. Some will be bigger. Some will be smaller. Um, although it is a fine tip bottle, sometimes the drips are quite large. I'm good with that. You could get the same effect with a brush. So this is what we have. And I think that's definitely grungy. So once my ink is dry, um, I sometimes go in with my blending um, ink. And I'll just, let me see if I can find a dry piece. Um, something that's not got any ink on it. So what I might do is go in and just add some brush ink um, to the stencil work just to darken it up um, but that's something you can decide to do as and when you use your paper so if you wanted to you could add more ink just to grunge it up even more in places um, which I like <laughs> And if you really wanted to, you could add some gold splatters just to bring that gold back to the front as well if you wanted. Um, so that is just how I start my grungy papers. Don't always put the stenciling on either. So this is the blue one that I was talking about earlier. And the blues on this, this is the steel grey again and denim, denim blue. I mean, look at that piece. It just looks, looks awesome. And then I, this one I've done the back. So this piece of paper is more than enough to probably make maybe one or two mini grungy journals. And this one, again, I would get probably two grungy journals out of there. But it depends what I'm doing. Um, this particular colour is for the larger project that I'm working on. So I wanted colours to blend in with the kit that I'm using and with the theme of the project. So that's why I wanted this one to be in greens. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's very, very basic, very straightforward. Um, just a way of starting with a piece of blank paper and ending up with something quite fun. I will see you all really soon. Bye.